Africa's largest oil refinery, Dangote Refinery, will not be finished until the end of 2020 due to problems of importing steel and other equipment. This is according to the executive director, Dangote Group, Devakuma Edwin. Mr. Edwin says the company expects fuel production within two months of completion of the refinery, which could transform Africa's biggest crude producer from a fuel importer into a net exporter for pending global trade partners. Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation, imports virtually all its fuel due to underutilized refineries, and even the state oil company is looking to the 650,000 barrel per day Dangote refinery to help address this. Price caps force NNPC to import nearly all its gasoline at a significant cost, and periodic fuel shortages are common. Despite the delays at the congested Apapa and Tin Can Island ports in Lagos, the company could start using the refinery tank farms as a depot to warm up operation. Our target was to complete mechanical completion by the end of this year and start commissioning the refinery. So now this has given us a setback, so, but still we will be able to complete the project by the end of next year, mechanical completion, and then we will start commissioning the refinery. Billionaire. Ali Kodangote, who built his fortune on cement, first announced a smaller refinery in 2013 to be finished in 2016. Dangote then moved to the site to take two. Dangote then moved the site to Lekki in Lagos, upgraded the size, and said production was starting early 2020. We are setting up a complete trading desk here with us. And in the next three months, the full desk will be set up. We already have most of the team members in. And so once we believe it's the right time, we'll quickly go and close the deals. The tanks will be connected to five SPMs, which will allow the refinery complex to pump crude straight into tanks from large ships at sea and pump products back onto boats of any size. The SPMs will be the primary method of supplying all products from the refinery. From the refinery, there is a pipeline running up to the SPM, so it will be pumped through the pipeline we have actually a 120 kilometer pipeline network inside the sea. So the vessel will come and it will couple its hose to the SPM. So from there it will pump directly into the ship. The team is in talks with NNPC, two other international oil companies and two large oil traders, all of whom are interested in supplying crude and buying products. The East African Portland Cement has backed away from a plan to dismiss its entire 800-strong workforce, saying it would make a further statement about restructuring the company. Portland is 52% owned by government, and Lafarge Wholesome owns a 41.7% stake. Portland swung to a pre-tax profit of 6.96 billion shillings in the year to end June 2018 after a loss of 1.71 billion shillings in the previous year. It has not released figures for fiscal year 2019. It said last year it held a market share of 11 percent. Portland's rivals include Bamburi Cement and National Cement Company, which in May signed a deal to buy ARM cement after it was put into administration last August by creditors with a debt totaling $190 million. And Zambia's mining ministry has asked Glencoe subsidiary Mopani Copper Mines to rescind its decision to close two shafts at its Nkana site. Mopani announced the shaft closures on Thursday in a move that an opposition leader said had led to 1,400 job losses. Mines Permanent Secretary Paul Chanda on Friday said he had written to Mopani to ask the company not to close the two shafts because it had not exhausted discussions with the government. Chanda said the government had, among other suggestions, asked Mopani to hand over the running of the shafts to local contractors instead of closing them. 
And the sign of BMW and, uh, of course, Vox, uh, Volkswagen are among car makers in talks to bring the electric car revolution to South Africa as the nation's auto factory flows risks being left behind in the global switch to greener vehicles. According to the chief executive officer of the National Association of Automobile Manufacturers of South Africa, Mike Mabasa, the industry is preparing a unified stance on electrification to present to the government by the end of the year. The aim is to persuade lawmakers to reduce or drop a 23% import tariffs on electric vehicles to help ramp up nascent domestic sales and also roll out a charging infrastructure in a country where the state-owned power monopoly is in deep financial crisis. South Africa places local contact at heart of new autos program. And that's it on the program. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago.